Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Youth Man. In this video, we're going to be setting up and configuring Odyssey's Multi-EQ XT32 room calibration software. But before we get into the video, if you're into home theater audio and video, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell notification so that you'll be notified when the next video drops. All right, guys, well, I want to give a big thanks to Marantz for sponsoring this series as we continue on the Marantz SR8012 receiver. In this video, we're going to be walking through step by step how to set up and calibrate your system with Odyssey. Now, even if you don't have the exact version of Odyssey that I do, maybe you have an older version of Odyssey, it's still the basic principle. So even if you don't have the exact receiver or the exact version of Odyssey, there's still a lot of information that will be valuable to you in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, the first thing we need to do is get our Odyssey room correction microphone. And so we're going to go ahead and take this out of the box. And it comes with a really long cable so you can position it through various areas in your room. On this other end, you've got this 3.5 millimeter jack. So we're going to open up the Marantz right over here on the SR8012. It says setup mic. I'm just going to plug it into that port right there. The next thing we want to do is take the Odyssey microphone and secure it to a tripod. Now, in my case, I've got a tripod, so we're going to screw it into here. If you don't have a tripod, Marantz has included a cardboard tripod. Now, this is pretty weak. Now, there's nothing fancy about this. It's just cardboard, and really, it's not that great, but it'll do in a pinch if you do not have a tripod. Basically, each one of these are lettered, so you've got the A... So you'll match the A up with that, then the B on top of that, then the C on top of that. So once you get it all configured, there's these little tabs that allow you to slide this in here like this. And you can see there's a little tab right here. You can push the tab in and that keeps it from sliding down. Once you get all the pieces together, you can take the microphone, slide it in these little corners like this, give it a little half spin, and it secures it in there. So I'm going to take the base of my tripod, and we're just going to screw that into the bottom of the microphone. Just like that. And we take my tripod and secure the base to the tripod just like that you want to make sure that you have the height of the microphone right at about ear level so what I tend to do is sit in the seat next to it and adjust the height until the top of the microphone is right about my ear level all right once we power on the Marantz we're going into the setup button on the remote we're gonna come down here to setup assistant and then we're gonna come down to speaker setup now in the speaker setup, it's going to walk you step by step on how to connect your speakers. So we're going to go ahead and go through each one of these real quickly. There's a couple of questions that will ask you like, do you have a center channel? Yes, we do. Do I have surrounds? I do. Do we have surround backs, which would be the 7.2 part of it? So yes, I have those and I have two speakers. And on this screen, it allows you to select whether or not you have Dolby Atmos or Oro 3D or DTSX setup. So in my case, I have four Dolby Atmos in ceiling speakers. So I'm going to come down to four speakers, two pairs. Click enter. And then it's going to ask you what setup do you have? In this situation, you have two front height and two top middle. You can have front height and top rear. There's front height and surround height, front height and rear height, top front and top rear, top front and rear height, or top middle and rear height. So in my setup, again, I have four in ceiling speakers, and so I'm gonna select top front and top rear and hit enter. It walks you through on how to connect those on the back of your receiver. 
Do I have a subwoofer? Yes, we do. And in this case, I'm just setting up one subwoofer. So I'm going to select one. It shows you on the back of the receiver where to connect that on the sub one output. And here's the summary. We've got front speakers, a center speaker, one subwoofer, surrounds, surround backs, and top front and top rear Dolby Atmos speakers. So we're going to click next. And now we're going to begin to play some test tones through the system and through your speakers. And it's going to test that with the microphone. So we're going to click next. The subwoofer is turned on, so we're going to hit next. So we can hear the front, so I'm going to hit yes. I hear the center. I hear the right. I hear the surround right, surround back. Okay, so we were able to hear all of the speakers. Now we're gonna come down to speaker calibration where the actual calibration setup is gonna take place. So it's gonna walk you through what I just showed you earlier in the video. It shows our current configuration, which is correct. So we're gonna hit next. It walks you through on how to set it up either on a tripod or the included tripod. Where to plug that in, which we've already covered. Our subwoofer is set at 50%. And so Odyssey Multi-Q XT32 allows up to eight different measurements in your room. And as you can see, there's one couch with basically three seats in it, a center seat, a right seat, and a left seat. And what you're going to want to do is place the microphone in various positions around what we call the primary listening position, which is noted on number one in the center. Now in my setup, I have two rows of seating. So I have a row of three in the front, as well as a row of three in the back. And you may think to yourself, wouldn't you want to place the microphone in each of my six seating positions? And the answer to that question is no, because you can't really physically optimize that broad of a space. You can't optimize an entire room and make sure everybody gets great sound in that. So what you're going to want to do is to optimize for your primary listening position. In my case, it is position one, which is the center seat. And then we're gonna place the microphone about two feet apart from that number one position in those eight seating positions. So let's go ahead and go to next. We've got the microphone pointed straight upward and it's at ear heights. We'll hit next. And now it's just gonna tell you, please be quiet. Make sure you turn off your cell phones, turn off any noises and distractions. Try to do it when maybe nobody's home as well. So we'll click next. And once you're ready to begin, we're gonna click begin test. Okay, so in this case, it determined that the subwoofer level is actually too high. So what we're gonna do is click on subwoofer level matching. And now we're gonna to go to the back of the subwoofer and reduce the gain until we get it down to something that Odyssey likes. So about right there. So what Odyssey likes to see is that you have the subwoofer around 75 dB. And as you can see here, it's bouncing between 74 and 75, so we're fine. So we're gonna click next, and we're gonna click continue. All right, so Odyssey has gone around through each individual speaker to test those, so we're gonna click next. And now it's gonna show you to place it in position number two. So I'm gonna quickly move the microphone over to the second seat, about two feet from the original position, and then we're gonna continue the testing. Now for this demo, I'm gonna go ahead and speed it up because you're just gonna repeat this process through all eight positions around your primary listening position. It's going to take probably around 20 minutes to do the testing of all eight seating positions. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here while I go through the remaining seven positions.
Okay, so I've taken measurements from each of the eight positions, and now we're gonna hit continue, and the Marantz is going to calculate that and analyze that data. So my recommendation here is to turn dynamic EQ on. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through this. It'll take just a few minutes for it to analyze it, as well as make some corrections. Once it's applied the room corrections, we'll click next. And we'll go ahead and disconnect the microphone. So Odyssey has finished calibrating, so we'll click next. And now what we wanna do is return to the main menu by hitting return. So now what we wanna do is go up to speakers and hit enter, come down to manual setup, and then let's come down to speaker configuration. Now what you'll see here is that the receiver has received the information from Odyssey and the Marantz has determined that it believes that the fronts need to be set to large. My recommendation is to set your fronts, your center, surround, set all of those to small, and then you'll set your crossovers to where certain frequencies will be sent to your main speakers and your surrounds and your Atmos speakers, and frequencies below that crossover are going to be sent to the subwoofer. So we're gonna click enter, we're gonna change this from large to small. The center set to small, so that's fine. I've got one subwoofer. Surrounds and surround backs are set to small, so we're good there. And then the top and rear are set to small as well for my Atmos speakers. So we're good there. We're gonna hit back or exit. Now one thing that you can do is come down to distances and check to see how well it measured it. Your front, your rears, your surrounds, and you can check those and actually pull out a tape measure to make sure those are accurate. We're gonna go back. Now one thing I do like to do is come down to levels. I won't do it in this demonstration because I've done it in a previous video. But if you go to levels, you can click test tone start and it will play a test tone through each speaker one at a time. If you have an SPL meter, as you cycle through each speaker, you want to make sure that each speaker level is the same exact volume on your SPL meter. So let's say your front left registers on the dB meter at 75 dB, and when you go to your center channel, it registers at 73, you're going to want to bump that up a few decibels till it gets to 75 dB. And the reason for this is you want all of your speakers to have the same exact volume so that they're what they call level matched. But for this demonstration, like I said, we won't do that. I'm gonna go back. We're gonna come down to crossovers. Now in the crossover selection, we have the option of setting a crossover frequency for each individual speaker. Now you can see here, the Marantz received the information from Odyssey and it determined that the front speakers need to be set with a crossover of 40 Hertz. Now what that means is frequencies that are 40 Hertz and above will be sent to the front speakers while frequencies that are 40 hertz and below will be sent to the subwoofer. Now, if you saw my video called Odyssey Got It Wrong, I'll link it in the card above as well as in the description below. I found out that setting your crossover at 40 hertz really isn't the most ideal situation. And the main reason is I was listening to music during that video and I just was not getting the slam that I knew I should from the subwoofer. And the reason is, is the frequencies during that song were probably in the 50 to 60 hertz range. So all of those bass frequencies were being sent to my main speakers instead of the subwoofer. So what I like to do is set my front crossover to 80 hertz. Typically, you're going to want to set it anywhere between, say, 60 and 80. You can try each one and see what sounds best to your ears. There's really no right or wrong. My preference, as well as THX's recommendations, is to set that at 80 hertz. The center channel, I'm gonna do the same thing, set that to 80. The surrounds, I'm gonna set those to 80. Now you'll see the Marantz set the top front Atmos speaker and the top rear Atmos speaker at 120 hertz and 150 hertz. Since I have in-ceiling speakers, there's no reason not to run them at 80 hertz. Now if you have Dolby Atmos up-firing speakers, the ones that you would place on top of a front tower or rear surrounds, you would want to use a higher frequency such as 
110 hertz, maybe up to even 200 hertz because you're having to reflect the sound off of the ceiling and then back down to your listening position. And frequencies below 110 hertz aren't going to be very directive. And so for my setup, again, I'm going to change this to 80 hertz for both the top front as well as my top rear speakers. Now again, these are not the absolute, this is how you need to do it. This is my preference from what I've experienced in my own home theater. By all means, play with the crossovers and see what sounds best to your ears. These are just some general settings for you to try. So once we've set our crossovers, we'll go back to the main menu. And then we're gonna come down to bass and make sure that this is set to 120 Hertz. Now this was always really confusing to me, so I'll try to explain it pretty simple. The LFE is its own individual channel, which basically stands for low frequency effects. So when you set your front main speakers to say 80 Hertz, any sound that comes to the front speakers that are below 80 Hertz will be routed to the subwoofer. But when sound engineers make a track for a movie, they also include low frequency effects that don't come through the main speakers they're going directly through that LFE channel and those frequencies are anywhere from 120 Hertz down and so if you change this to say 80 Hertz to match your front speakers any content that the sound engineer sent through that LFE channel that's 120 Hertz down to 80 Hertz you will not hear and you will not experience so in essence you'll be missing out on content that the sound engineers desired for you to hear. So my recommendation is leave your subwoofer mode to LFE and leave the LFE set to 120. So now we'll go back to the main menu and we can exit the setup menu. Okay, so there you have a comprehensive step-by-step -step walkthrough on how to calibrate your system using the Odyssey room calibration setup. Now, if you have any questions regarding Odyssey, feel free to leave those down in the comments below as well as any tips or tricks that you have that you want to share with others. Now, if you're interested in purchasing the SR8012, I'll leave a link to it down in the description. And if you're interested in other videos on the Marantz SR8012, you can check out this playlist right here. Well, guys, I'm going to wrap up the video here. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. And as always, you guys be blessed, and we'll catch you in the next video.